and welcome to The Planets Are My Gods with your hosts, Mariah Karina and Arakai Moon. We are continuing our journey around the zodiac, exploring some of the deep soul essential level dynamics of each sign. And we find ourselves today at the galactic intelligence, the magnificent water bearer, the brilliant dance that is Aquarius. So we just came from Capricorn and Capricorn is considered the yin Saturn. And then moving into Aquarius, we're into the yang Saturn, which I think is very interesting because Capricorn has a high premium and a lot invested in sustaining the systems and structures. Whereas I feel that Aquarius is almost looking from this bird's eye view, standing outside of the systems and analyzing them for what isn't working, what needs to be improved and how it can be brought to its highest, most exalted expression. And Aquarians, I think, get a lot of shit for being controversial, for being um, critical, for avoidant being, and not relational. Get a lot of shit for a lot of things. But I really feel that at the heart of the Aquarian process is this profound experience of what it is to be outside of a system looking in. And for the value that that outside perspective gives you, there's this book by Albert Camus called The Stranger, and it's all about how it's someone outside of a culture that can see it more clearly because it's not the water they're swimming in. They're able to have a more objective point of view. They're able to see who is being, who and what is being marginalized by the system as it is. And I think Aquarians are incredibly tuned to that. Aquarians are the social scientists. They're the keepers of the margins. They're into subcultures and taboos. They want to go around to everyone who the system isn't serving. They're attuned to that. And I think it's because of this deep systems intelligence that all of those voices that aren't being listened to by the system have something profound to offer. Because if it's not because of who it's not working for and what it's not working for and how is more data. And I think in integrating that data, then the Aquarian is trying to see how can we make this be at a higher standard, be at a higher level. Right. And I think also having the right relationship with its internal authorship, Aquarian is able to not only be on the outside, but to able like to go in and then know how to affect it, change, know how to be in right relationship with the structures, but also the individuals that are inside of that societal structure. Right. And I think that I really feel this experience when I'm traveling, I can always psychically sense the tapestry of that collective consciousness, of that reality, and go into it. And because I'm not immersed in it, because it doesn't contain all of my familial karmic trauma of my upbringing, I don't feel as triggered, and therefore I also feel free. I, They, for one, don't give me the same rules that they would. You know, me being gay, for instance, um, or genderqueer, um, can go into a society that is really Catholic or indigenous or, um, yeah, just really conservative, um, and specifically really harsh on homosexuality or trans experience, um, trans people inside of their cultures to their own people. Yeah. But when I go in there, not want to see PDA exactly between queer people, not be accepting of folks who are outside the gender binary. And I feel like so many people are asking me like, how do you go to these different places and then do that? I'm like, I'm going to fucking do it wherever I am. But it's also, there's something that they're less harsh on me. Right. And then when I come back to the States, I haven't been here, you know, for such a long time until now, um, for 13 years. But when I come back and I visited, I will feel that same experience of going back into that collective consciousness and feeling all the patterns and the collective wounds and desires and the addiction patterns and all of those things. And yet I will feel triggered. And so there's this thing about Aquarian where this, this, this desire to unhook to decondition, to free and liberate itself from societal, familial, and relational obligations. And it's really hard 
to free and liberate oneself if A, you're swimming so much in the water or B, you're so triggered that you react in all these really um, like n- nervous system or attachment dysfunctional ways um, that then cause more triggers, for instance, and more opposition or whatever it is, right? So I think that when we've actually are in some sort of a neutral place, um, are able to actually really affect change, not only in the society um, or the container that we're stepping into, but also feel more free to make our boundaries and also still feel connected um, w- within ourselves, right? And that's what I think the Aquarian wound is so strong of like feeling alienated, like feeling that pain and that loneliness and that isolation of not knowing how to be removed, but also be connected still. Because Aquarians are not only doing this process in places where they are travelers, strangers, cultural others on vacation, but having this experience in their family, in their school, in their peer group, in the culture that they're in. Right. You know, so much of Aquarius, to me, it has that sky point of view quality. There is something above looking down. I always think it's like there's an Aquarian soul star that is communing cosmic intelligence into the perception of folks with really strong Aquarian energy. And that's, it's such a complicated archetype because it really is here to do something new. Innovation is Aquarius. Um, technology is Aquarius. They're here to, to, yeah, to bring in something totally novel. And yet trauma is also Aquarius because that new thing can be a shock. Absolutely. And also... They're here to do something new as a fixed sign. I think there's just something so intense of having to hold the perspective of wanting to do something different in your system in and of itself. And right. when systems natural inclination is towards self-preservation is anti-change. Culture is to slow change. Institutions are set up to prevent change. And so the process of holding that in your body and having to hold it as an Aquarian in a fixed sign right. is traumatic in and of itself. And that dance between self and other, between the individual trying to, you know, shine its freak flag and also stand for everyone else's when everything is against it, when all those Saturnian forces are other, it's a heavy cross to bear. Right. And like you're saying, it's traumatic in itself and it rules the nervous system. And I feel like that trauma is encoded for generations and generations of that Prometheus or of that outsider or that outside thinker, you know, that out of the box revolutionary thinker that brings something of change and insight liberation that is outside of that norm. And for whatever, you know, it could be um, religious or um, whoever's money it goes against or power it goes against or whatever is happening that rocks the foundations of what is maintaining that um, system of power at the time. Tremendous pain and trauma to individuals or s- s- marginalized groups of society have endured, you know, the, the, the killing, you know, the persecution and the killing and the public ridicule. Like what we did to the witch- witches was not just killing them. We publicly and sexually mutilated and ridiculed them to where it's it is in every part of our dna it is in our bones it is in our nervous system it is in the throats of the women that i work with it is it is inside of us and i feel like that experience is such a close like heart experience for the aquarian and it's interesting that I say heart too, because it's like it rules the nervous system and the opposite of Aquarius is Leo in the heart. Leo mm-hmm. rules the heart, you know? So I feel like that, that connection to the, the self, to the individual desires and the individual expression and the heart and the feeling is something that sometimes gets cut off inside of that trauma of being um, different, being other, being alien, being um, the one that's here to be in the world and not of the word, world, quote unquote. Um, yeah. And so much of, um, we had another podcast where we were talking about the two most rebellious signs in the Zodiac are Aries and Aquarius. Right. And I think Aries, just because that first Mars impulse doesn't always go along with the rules. And then I think Aquarius like we were saying in this other way, because it's seeing the system and it's trying to bring in 
something different. Right. And they're both hugging Pisces. And I think there's something, so I think I might've said this in that, that episode, but to me, I feel like it's, it's worthy of repeating because the Aries coming out of the oceanic consciousness, out of that Piscean collective soup of the bliss of all that is, um, and the bliss and the suffering of all that is really. And, and being able to come out and make a new way, affect change, innovate. And then that Aquarius coming on full cycle, going through all of the, you know, individual and collective developmental stages to then come to Aquarius and be like, okay, I'm here to affect change and then surrender into the wholeness again. You know, it's, there's these two beautiful rebels that also are in deep devotion to that ocean of all that is, to that beauty of like the one. And whereas Aries is like that newborn baby rushing in head first and being the fool, I think Aquarius is like a raw nerve. To me, nobody senses the norms and unspoken rules of society more acutely. Yeah. than Aquarius and it's intensely felt and often oppressively felt and like you said so judged given so much shit and it's that being somebody that has been in so many relationships with Aquarians have learned so much and I also will like find them out of a room <laughs> like almost anywhere I go because I will feel that that raw nerve that you're speaking of that like fine-tuned electrical sensitivity of their nervous system, you know, and that deep desire to be free Mm -hmm. and to also be able to be in spaces or be in society or be in relationships that create that balance between, um, being an individual and being a part of something, but being able to be in right relationship with that. Whereas I feel like the yin of Capricorn is being right relationship with like the gravity and the actual resources of earth. And Aquarius feels like it's being right relationship with the energy system, the electrical magnetic frequencies and like rhythm of reality of nature itself. And I feel like we have a society that is not only extracting from the resources and dominating and creating so many patterns around that to where we don't know what's sustainable and what's not. We also have a society that, you know, virtually gaslights anything around what is not seen and, um, and is very... Like we move, even we walk in a way that blazes past... Um, the way that energy moves, the, the speed of which it moves, the quality of which it moves. It's become this woo-woo psychic thing to just be sensitive with those realms of existence, which Chinese, Ayurvedic, all indigenous systems have, have created a way to work within the electrical and energy um, systems within the body. And Our develop nervous things system like... Is- walking meditations to help people become more attuned to understanding their energy energy body more and understanding like the electric limits and responses of their nervous systems it makes me think of um kung fu like you have to do a certain number of years devoted to qigong and tai chi before you can be trained in kung fu which is an external very fast very physical martial arts and the other ones focus on maintain like cultivating and maintaining that energetic sensitivity so that when you start to move the physical body you're not moving out of that energetic you're moving with it which makes the actual punch much more powerful right so when we're moving our physical nature in line with that energy then it's that it's not only more physically powerful but we also I feel like have less um, accidents for instance Mm -hmm. Um, and diseases right right and how are you relating this to Aquarius because the Aquarian is sensitive to that energy that electrical force field of like how to move things and and how that is actually shaping reality 
Yes. And whereas I think you were describing it in the body, where it most certainly lives, right? The body keeps the score. I think for the Aquarian also being an air sign, it's additionally in the perception. It's in that, like, in, in the mind. In the mind. Absolutely. And in interacting. And right, which I love how the air signs come in to affect that change and then how, you know, like Virgo is the earth of Mercury and Aquarius is this yang of Saturn. It's that air mental capacity to see how we affect the physicality. Mm-hmm. Right? Yes. My um, Arnie Mandel, my process work teacher, he says the biggest edge that we have is anything outside of consensus reality. So if consensus reality is like, I'm me, you're you, we're sitting at a table right now, we're talking to a microphone, all of these things that we can collectively and consensually agree upon, any stepping out of that is hyper-policed. Any speaking of things like dreams or any questioning of those um, presuppositions, like I'm me, but I'm also you, but like, you know, anything where you're in a different state of mind, where you're in a different state of consciousness is hyper-policed. And to me, the Aquarian also is a great bringer of altered states. But I want to go back. I'm getting a little distracted just to the thing about the sensitivity and you saying that you could pick them out of a room because I think you're attracted to trackers. And I think Aquarians are hyper trackers and Aquarian process is always tracking and always power mapping the room. And I think that that's part of the tightrope that Aquarius is walking all the time is do I contort myself to play by these rules or do I do something different? And in, in, people always say like, oh, Aquarian is about like the true individual. And I think that's true. But what I've also found is that Aquarius has an often existential process around their own sense of self and their own individuality. And I think part of it is because they're in trying to exist within those norms in being able to so accurately and acutely power map and sense the rules it can become a little bit traumatically separated from its own sense of self. Absolutely. And so that journey to find one's individual nature is in and of itself part of the Aquarian process. And that's what I was also trying to speak to about having a society that kind of blazes past these subtleties is it causes the Aquarian A to feel like overwhelmed and overly stimulated and or over like hurt. Um, Like you said, that raw nerve, I feel like that raw nerve is such a good example or just a powerful image to really feel inside of ourselves when we're feeling for the Aquarian. I actually have so many lovers and clients that are Aquarians and they have an extremely sensitive relationship to their clit. And I mean, imagine the raw nerve. It's like the rawest of the the rawest, the most sensitive of the sensitive, the greatest collective of nerves on any human body is there. It's right there. And so much of what, I mean, some of them, when I start to to speak to my experience with my relationship to Aquarian women and their clits, they'll start to cry almost right away, just feeling seen or validated and heard for the first time around something so vulnerable and so frustrating, so confusing, um, so isolating. What do as they to, feel? Right, as what to do this, they feel? Because a lot of times they have such a sensitive nervous system and such a sensitive clit that they for one, become masters of their own clit and masters of being able to bring themselves into edging experiences and multiple orgasms and find a really beautiful way to go into that space with themselves. But they have a lot of trauma. Maybe a freaky way. (laughs) Maybe they're a little freaky. Um, But they have a lot of trauma around um, being able to share that experience with another. And specifically, people being able to, A, have enough patience to learn the sensitivity and the particularity of their clits, desires. And um, what I've noticed is that I have to melt my brain, is what I call it, to be able to go into that flow trance state so perfectly, is to be able to listen to the energy and not, as soon as I think I'm gonna touch it in this way, I'm gonna do this thing, ooh, it's liking this, so I'm gonna keep doing that. If I do any of those patterns, that one might be able to get away with, with anyone else. (laughs) Um, 
And in which other people with other nervous systems might enjoy. That's what I'm saying. Like a lot of women enjoy actually repetition and certain or just a lot of different things that I can do those things. And if I'm doing that with that in mind, that's going to most likely overwhelm. There's going to be a lot of like patterns that arise. It's going to like frustrate it. They're going to go into patterns of like just um, disassociating, going into porn realms or fantasy realms, or they're just going to like try to override that part. And that's when it feels like it gets into that sex mode route where it's like, oh, we're doing this sex thing. So now I'm going to like override and, and get disconnected from my heart and my feelings and like try to do this thing for me and for you. And I'm like, Ooh, stop. And so me being able to work with my own, um, you know, need to be good at something or, um, insecurity around stopping something has really allowed me to be able to go slow into those places with them and work out what's happening. Um, so that, you know, because it's their, their own issues of uh, their coping mechanisms and their trauma responses also that are responsible for, you know, the container that's created, the experience that's created. But I think that so many times they try to override themselves because based on what they think the other person wants. And also the other person isn't like able to actually listen to that sensitivity. Like the click can literally be doing like a figure eight and then just randomly do this other thing. Like the energy does so many different things and in order to like really listen and follow that energy it's like doing cranial sacral it's like really listening to that slow cerebral spinal fluid and the and the listening and the following of that is what allows the body to actually start to bring up the imbalances and then and magnify and then bring itself into balance And I feel like that is actually what helps bring the Aquarians into these like different layers of pleasure and unfolding. And so many of those places of conditioning can start to unravel and dissolve and be healed. But I think that the clit just feels like it's so much of a microcosm of their overall experience of feeling like, overly stimulated or needing to mask in certain ways um based on like the power games or the desires to um yeah overlook like certain sensitivities um I feel like a lot of neurodivergent experiences can be like really uh found inside of Aquarius and and so I just feel like that really um that archetype really shows like these this different way of, of sensing, of thinking inside of the collective and like finding new pathways. And I feel like some of my greatest sexual experiences and also like ways of really learning mastery around sexuality has been deeply initiated with an Aquarian because of that desire for really, really subtle listening and the building of that physicality on top of that is so crucial and then also the mastery between all of the social and individual conditioning that goes along with those experiences yeah (laughs) does that make sense totally yes do you want to say more about like the do you want to say more about any part of it I think it totally makes sense. I mean, if you have a question, I don't That's my question. Is what do you think that says about Aquarius? Like that level of sensitivity. If you have that level of sensitivity, like you're saying the raw nerve at the beginning, I feel like I keep going back to that because it's so perfect of what you were saying. You can feel anything that's off. You also, there's something that has to be dismantled inside of myself and inside of them in order to even listen that deeply. In order to melting. The brain melting. The, um, not just the brain melting either. It's the societal or the individual. It's like my own egoic whatever. It's their egoic whatever. It's coping mechanisms between both of us need to be actually transmuted and transformed in order to be able to see what is that actual true path that is in right relationship to the energy. 
And I think that's what I mean about it bringing in something different. Yeah. Right? All those structures, all new. those cultures, all of those languages, they're in trained, known ways of doing things. And you're saying you have to like melt all of your preconceived notions, right? All the ways we shorthand life in order to be able to move through it more quickly, to actually get present with what this sensitive nerve bundle is is showing us this new way, this new thing. And the reason that I said I feel like neurodivergence is also held within the Aquarian archetype, I feel like autism or ADHD, it's like we have a different relationship with our executive system. Autism, I feel like they need extra structure. They're highly sensitive. ADHD, highly sensitive and affected by everything. And no structure. (laughs) Very different relationship with it. But both of those... um, experiences of neurodivergence needs to create their own new thing to actually even exist in society Mm -hmm. to even be able to find the way that it feels good Mm -hmm. and that we can get anything done um yeah having to come up with your own tools your own understandings your own rhythms which I think a lot of that experience for me has been a lot of the tools that I bring to my clients how to get in touch, how to know what I like, how to follow it, how to cultivate that fire relationally and individually. And I think the same thing goes for, you know, people on the spectrum. Um, So I think that a lot of times where neurotypical people, for instance, might be able to get by, quote unquote, inside of the system, inside of the boat that we've created in society, I think that that neurodivergence allows for such a break that we can't get by we feel the consequences right away and I think that that Aquarian experience is that they feel the consequences right away it doesn't work for them they have to create a new pathway and that sensitivity is the key and being able to do that and being able to honor it and it kind of goes back to that part of like the Capricorn that we were speaking about of of being in touch with that those vulnerabilities, being in touch with that anger, being in touch with that, that pain and valuing it enough to create a structure and authority, internal authorship around being proactive about doing something about it. And the Aquarian experience is something, another evolution of that, of being able to go in and feel very viscerally what does not work for itself and the other and also not be as immersed in the soup of it to be able to find some change. But they are immersed in their own soup. They get very, very, very overwhelmed often with their own experience. And I think that's what that like fixed, that fixed air to me feels like is sometimes that, that overwhelm of their own thought processes or their own actual experience internally that they need to create something different. Mm-hmm. Like that overwhelm requires the creating something different? That overwhelm and that, it's, well, the sensitivity, the overwhelm mm-hmm. is the, the alarm the system. Results. <laughs> the results, the alarm system of like, we can't do it like that. And yeah. it's not pleasurable, yeah. you know? So it's like, whereas somebody else, I think that like, for instance, can get a CEO job or can get, not that Aquarians can't, but I'm just saying like, if you can't live in the system and thrive in it, you mm-hmm. have to find a different way. And I think that Aquarians, it's not that they can't get those things and, and, you know, it looks different for whatever that Aquarius is having that. But I think that the core experience of an Aquarian to me is to have a lot of sensitivity around specific things and need to find a different way Mm -hmm. and specifically familial, societal, (laughs) relational obligations and liberating oneself feels to be like the main mission And I think just what you're talking about, the Aquarius is known for liberation, right? Wherever you have Aquarius in your chart, wherever you have Uranus in your chart, is what you are liberating and what you are liberating from, all of it. And the fact is that liberation in and of itself is traumatic. I think there might be something to make peace with that change is often felt as trauma, that... um, the sort of uh, 
the intensity that can come from doing something innovative is also traumatic. Like that line is part of what I'm seeing as like this vibrating electric blue of the nervous system. Right. That I think is just inherent in the experience. I mean, so much, that's what the whole Tao is about. It's about being with the changes. And I feel there's deep wisdom in there because it was understanding that the nature of existence is change and that our experience of existence is determined by how we're able to relate to and flow with that change. Right. And yet, and I what think, determines trauma is the way that we're able to integrate that experience. What comes. Right. Mm. And I do think that what I was trying to really get to about the, the relationship of the clit feeling so indicative to the entire experience of Aquarius is that that high sensitivity, but if there's any conditioning around needing to do it in a different way we skip over we blaze over that and so like there's so much panic sometimes socially or in relationship to be able to do it a certain way and even for the Aquarian individual itself like that change that precipice of what's unknown like you said it's the rebellious so it's like the full card too it's like what's unknown can cause just in and of itself extreme panic of what's on the other side that one may try to numb itself and dissociate disassociate in order to mask. Yeah. And a lot of Aquarians I know are in a pretty continuous process of masking. Absolutely. And I think that exacerbates the existential crises about what is the self. Like, I would like to right. shout out to my dear friend, not going to say your name just in case, but I think you know who you are, girl, who is like, I don't know who I am. Like, I feel like I perform this individuality. I perform this self all the time. And really, when I get down to it, the only thing I actually really feel on a regular basis, like when I leave the party, when I leave work, when I come back to myself, when I turn away, the expression on my face, the feeling in my heart and my belly is just angry and lazy. (laughs) The only thing I recognize as me as my home tone is angry and lazy, sometimes angry and tired. (laughs) Hmm. Say more about this. I I love so much because I know that feeling when I'm masking so much and I'm like, oh, da da la, like great to see you, you know, da da da. And I go home and that whatever that mask is, the energy just uh, drops. Right. And my real expression comes out and my real posture comes out and what I actually want in that moment. And I just love that like that thing would be angry and lazy for someone because it's also like fucking real. I also think it's like what has happened from such a long period of only wearing the mask. Of course. And so the only time to sink into the self is, like you're saying, feeling that. But what's underneath that is the journey and like how do you even get there when there's so much pressure around wearing that mask that's why i think the clit is so good i'm an example (laughs) because how will we ever know the orgasms and the (laughs) immense beautiful journeys of sexuality that we could go on if that aquarian does not and if their partner does not allow for that like stillness without the masking to inform you know? Yes. And also like the, um, the self is a mysterious, like ever changing (laughs) answer, you know, like, I don't think the self does not like to be looked at under a microscope. The self does not like to be solidified in terms of a, I am a collection of five identifiers. Like the self is it's, is its own figure eight orgasmic electric impulse that is constantly moving. And I feel like Aquarius, you're talking about the clit again, right? (laughs) As self, (laughs) the clit as self. And imagine like if they're poking, poking at it like poking at the self like do this thing what do you want what do you need like that makes people like freak out right yeah, it's like i don't know what the I want. party <laughs> introduce you to the party or what are you feeling right now and mm-hmm. people are like put on the spot it's like makes people so uncomfortable sometimes and i think that like that aquarian f- feels so unbelievably pressured but when they feel any sort of poking or obligation or any sort of like i need this coming f- in the direction of the Aquarian I way. I need you to fake your orgasm of self as self-expression for me. <laughs> I need just anything in general. <laughs> that could be a little bit my jaded response. But <laughs> I do think that having basic needs can highlight 
that deep pressure and exhaustion and panic that is just like a hair under the surface of the Aquarian experience. I do know what you mean because I think if this is the like, if the sense of self that might be experienced by a lot of Aquarian people is not necessarily made space for in society, especially now where everything is such a cult of the individual where you're supposed to be able to you know, present yourself and have your personality easily explainable on lock at any moment, then I do think in general that I think it can feel like pressure to perform a self that does not feel authentic. And I think it can be almost like, um, like a form of the rebellion also of not wanting to play that game or do that. I have a really good analogy and I'm not going to, I'm going to leave the name out. Mm -hmm. Of, of this but I've actually had so many a deep beautiful love of Aquarian best friends love loves everything of Aquarians um, tell me similar things that they've done and um, so I know of this person that is in a relationship and they knew their spouse loved these certain qualities about them like say they're like muscular and they work out and they have this like long hair and they have these like favorite shirts that they wear that really turns their partner on and they're like you know what I wonder if my if my partner really likes me for me oh my god so they stopped doing all that so they stopped doing those things they specifically stopped working out that is so funny my partner who is an Aquarius had this thing when they when he was a teenager where this girl he had a crush on was like look at Mickey, like some other guy in the class, look at Mickey's arms. They look so good. And Mickey had buff arms and he swore, my partner swore, I'm never going to work out. For the same <laughs> reason. <laughs> totally. It's like this way of rebelling, but it's a little bit potentially victimized and it's also and a sabotaging test. sometimes. Are you going to love me for me? And it's also in the wake, then I think it contributes to the existential crisis of self because yourself is now formed not only by like, you know, it's informed by the negative space of exactly. like who you're trying not to be and what you're trying not to be. It's something that I found, you know, after leaving Christianity, it's like I, I spent my whole life trying to like be at that God worthy to exist mode with that. And then as soon as I left that, I like rebelled against everything that they told me. And some of those things, like I forced myself to kiss a woman for the first time. Just literally thinking, I have been that brainwashed. I, who the fuck knows who I am? Who knows what I like? I've been conditioned with heaven and hell to based on that. And so I just forced myself to do everything. Turns out I fucking love women. I couldn't believe it. I thought it was going to be gross. I literally would probably plugged my nose the first time. Like, that's how bad I thought it was going to be. And then I stopped and I was like, oh my God, it's not horrible. And she was like, well, thanks. Like, <laughs> <laughs> thank you. And I was like, no, 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 but it's like, uh, it's not horrible. Let me do this again. And it's amazing. Mm -hmm. But like, sometimes it doesn't always lead to that. Like a lot of the other things that I pressed the boundaries with and like did in rebel, you know, like in direct reaction to that led me down a path that really took me very far away from myself. And so I had to, you know, have this moment where I then learned what I actually really wanted. And so not to be in just total reaction to Christianity, because I found myself, you know, a couple years later in a totally different place, but had come full circle because I was still in reaction to that, right? And so I think that that's somewhat of the Aquarian experience mm -hmm. too, is to be able to, yes, fucking rebel against everything and really, do, like, there is a part of deep sabotage and, like, loss of self that can happen if we are in total reaction to that. And so the true liberation is to really be able to find the space where that liberation leads the Aquarian into its heart deeper. <laughs> I have a, right. just another one of the story. I also had a girl who I used to babysit for. This is also um, uh, an Aquarian. And her parents thought she had um, that obstinance disorder, childhood. Yeah, oppositional defiance disorder. Oppositional I wouldn't know anything disorder. about that. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so they were trying to get her to exercise, and she wasn't into it. And they were worried about, you know, just uh she would just hang out on tiktok all day or whatever and um and then i was talking to her she's like yeah i don't want to exercise because my parents want me to 
mm-hmm. and I don't want right. them to win. And right. I was like, but if you don't exercise just because they're telling you to, then they still win. Right. And I saw this light go off in her yes. eyes. And she started exercising after that. That's why Marias is the best therapist. So if you guys want to bring any of your crazy teenagers or crazy spouses that refuse to like live, <laughs> just bring them to Mariah. <laughs> Or I, and we can help them clean those dishes fucking good for you. (laughs) Because holy fuck, like Aquarian is the fixed sign. Our friend Sabrina Monarch is always talking about how the fixed signs are places of power. That Aquarian is so fucking powerful. Maybe that's why I'm so attracted to Aquarians. It's true. It's that fixed sign. They are holding it in that power. Right. in their no, in their resistance, in their defenses, in, their, in their revolutionary behavior, in the other part of Aquarians that like are really rocking their individuality and getting way out there and being wild aliens, like so much power in the different expressions of Aquarius. And in that fixed experience of like, also when somebody like really just says, fuck it, I have a sensitive clit, I'm going to own this shit. Like Woo. that is a fucking hard, tough crowd, but like the most delicious, exquisite queen to serve. <laughs> for all of you hard queens out there, she <laughs> desire like she is <laughs> looking for an amazing queen little poppy to just for feel a service the, dom. <laughs> to feel the energetic labyrinth of your clitoris. To truly listen to the electric blue pulsing through lines and sing them down. Have you met Arakai? <laughs> that's a, that's my new Tinder application. <laughs> Thank you for the dating reference. Um, yes, they demand fucking mastery. Oh, it's like dating a scorpion. It's exquisite. <laughs> there's, there's nothing. It is like the intensity of an Aquarian doubling down. There's nothing like it. Nothing whether like it's it. in an argument, whether it's they're trying to make a political point, whether it's like... Uh, you know, they're just like gonna decide that the group needs to do this thing at this time. It's powerful. Yes. I know the the, the term, the motto is like, I know. (laughs) I know. I know. Aquarian is I know. And you know what? Every time I'm like, I fucking love Aquarians. I literally just collect them. Every time I tell an Aquarian, they're like, I know. I know. (laughs) Like, they love each other. Mm. They might have this really overwhelming and judge themselves in their moment of, like, clitoral panic or something, but they fucking deep down love themselves, love each other, and know that their their way is better. (laughs) They really do think that. Those higher standards that we're talking about. Those higher standards. And, you know, I think it can be, you can feel like fucking Sisyphus trying to liberate these things, but I think you know that you're working for the good cause. And I think when it is liberated, you know how great it could be. Another powerful point about Aquarius, you know, the 11th house rules groups and friendships, right, in a way, like groups of friends. And I think that's the thing where, like, the subcultures come in. That's where, like, um, tribe comes in, which I think is where Aquarians often have that wound of being exiled or um, ostracized from the tribe. But at the same time, I think Aquarians are some of the best, most loyal friends that Mm. I've found. Like Absolutely. Aquarians who, like, Yeah, when you really get into that, touch their heart. And when Aquarians really value friendship, I think there's some Aquarians who are sort of, like, lost feeling, um, like, perpetually on the outside, perpetually hurt. Totally. But there's another side of Aquarian that is just like 100% ride or die for totally. their friends. And such an ally to your independence and individual individuality, almost so much that it might be annoying at times. But <laughs> annoying. <laughs> annoying? How could that ever be annoying? You think that it wouldn't be annoying. Uh, and Well, I thought it was annoying until I've tried to date other people that aren't so <laughs> Allies, allying of my independence and um but you know sometimes I'm like I want you to claim I want you to like want me and claim me and and uh and and 
sometimes that, that has claiming that, has that feels sexy. For you? It has not worked <laughs> out in the relationships of Aquarian people. But when I get with other people that like, oh, they want to claim and then that individuality and like that freedom gets like suctioned out with like jealousy and like this narcissistic way of like, you got to be this thing for me. It's like that shit doesn't happen inside of Aquarius relationship. I'll take any day. That's what I was yeah. saying. I was like, how did wanting to be claimed work out? Because I don't know. That shit gets so possessive so fast. Yeah. I didn't know because I was always in relationships to Aquarians. <laughs> I mean, for real. <laughs> and then I dated somebody five planets in Scorpio and had a different experience. And now I'm back to just really honoring that independence. And autonomy. Autonomy. Space. And space is good. Yeah. Me and my Aquarian friend, uh, Sam, shout out. We have this thing that goes always off the hook is what we have it's like yes it's like if I call you if you can't answer always off the hook like if I invite you to something and you actually don't feel like going always off the hook like right. nothing is that guilt trip nothing is that social obligation it is always just what is your genuine what is desire the genuine truth and Aquarians will really ride or die that <laughs> And then you will be able to like not see them for years and just swoop on in and just connect. It's like once you've touched and you've connected and there's that loyalty there, it's like no space, time, boundary, or, or I mean distance um, can separate that either, like can sever that. It's really beautiful. And also that space really helps. Like if you're, if you, if you're out there and you want to love an Aquarian honor the space Ooh, let's between me and Arca I think we probably have like an Aquarian book or books <laughs> volumes I actually wrote a rap the other day it was like 10,000 hours it takes to be a master well I must be a master of you <laughs> speaking to the Aquarian woman out there because like 48,000 hours at least just for one Aquarian woman I have devoted and so yes we have spent thousands of hours learning I think learning. between us we have thousands of hours two of my longest relationships in my life were with Aquarians yes and one with a lot of Aquarian energy let's think how to love an Aquarius um, not to mention friendships deep friendships do not take their space always it's you know there's there's something to it but don't take their space as a personal attack to you. In the fact, they, they're them taking space. Them taking space. When they need space and they are overwhelmed, give that to them. Yes, work out your own boundaries around that and all of that sort of stuff, but that is not a negotiable for an Aquarian. They really do need that space. They really, really need that. Um, and you don't want the inverse. You don't, you don't want, want them dissociating and masking and stuff. Or stuff psychosis, down. meltdown, freak out. Well, that's the result, is what I'm saying. That's what I'm like, saying. You, like, don't you don't want, want the them. other way. Yeah, you don't want them masking and dissociating in order to do space with you because then it will come back. Their nervous system cannot hide it, and it will come back as psychosis, like rage, like because their system is gonna have to push you away. Yeah. In whatever you way. You do not want that electrical force field short firing and blowing you up. <laughs> it will fry. It will fry you both. Um, the other piece is that Neptune time. This is what my ex and I called it. Is that Neptune time of togetherness inside of space, spaciousness, if that makes sense. Is taking time together to also be silent to also be willing to allow the subtleties of the fine electrical currents and also the deep realms of the watery nature to arise to the surface let those currents rise up and and feel the ripples before just trying to ride the waves all the time just like that clip follow that figure eight Follow then the rhombus and the trapezoid and the window pane. Yeah, because that shit's gonna change on you. And if you're trying to make that thing happen, mm -mm, don't do it. It's gonna be so good when you don't. <laughs> when you follow it, they're like little flowers because the other part is Leo. So find the way to touch their heart. And they are really, really good at 
asking questions and observing and being the mastermind to be able to find a way to make you bloom. So have enough courage and awareness to step into that Shivic Aquarian role to be able to ask them questions open-ended questions that's like a pet peeve like when we ask leading questions or when we ask questions that kind of pigeonhole them in any sort of way don't do that that's not a way to open up ask open-ended questions follow the trail keep asking questions to where it helps them really unfold and blossom before you give a lot of space too i've mm-hmm. noticed that with aquarians you ask a question they give an answer and just go mm-hmm, and wait and see if more comes totally Because anything that you're doing out of um, some sort of egoic agenda or some sort of um, social panic that like blazes over what's really trying to happen in the moment, that's why it takes a lot of self-work, a lot of egoic shredding to be in a relationship with an Aquarian. Um, Anytime we step over that, it's going to shut them down. They're going to sense that obligation agenda or that inability to be in that silence or be in that natural unfolding as something that's confining, constricting, and suffocating. Yeah. It's really holding that come as you are and from a real place, like come as you are. I was even going to say, like, say more about that. Like, come as you are. It's a, it's a Nirvana lyric and it means like, however you're feeling in whatever state you're in come as you are, Mm. exactly as you are. I was going to say, I accept you no matter what is similar or like, I I love you completely as you are. But even both of those things imply that there's some sort of fixed sense of self. Right. You know? Right. And so I think it really is. Don't pigeonhole. (laughs) Yeah. It's that wide open space for it to be totally different. And just that sense of like, however, however you are, I love you. However you're showing up in this moment, totally okay and acceptable, whatever you need. Like, I have enough autonomy myself to allow you to have that, too. A lot of times I really feel that Aquarians are coming from a lot of Leo and Aries trauma. Mm. So Aries trauma being their needs and their personal desires, their own instinctual rhythm is somehow wrong. You know, it's selfish. It's wrong. It's not the right time. It's whatever. And then that Leo trauma is the pressure to perform to be a certain role. Right, So that the art or the expression, the whatever it is, is to please. The sexuality, it's all to please this other role or this other egoic, um, like, placating for you, right? I need to be this thing. Right. And so they're coming from that trauma a lot. And so in my opinion, like, in order to really love an Aquarian, good way, like, holding those Aquarian, or I mean, excuse me, holding the Aries leo aspects and supporting it finding ways to support their expression and their blossoming and find the places where if it means something about you you fucking deal with that shit on your own you fucking shred that in the moment you know Mm -hmm. to be able to show up for your fucking friend or your lover with no agenda if it means something for you like if their expression Uh uh-huh say for instance people mask in sexuality or in anything if if Uh, me really truly inspiring them to express what they're feeling and they do it and that means something for me right it means I wasn't the perfect lover it means I wasn't the whatever you know that is the work that I need to do not saying to shut my own feelings down and to like only be in the role to endlessly support them but but for do it in a balance, right? Do enough of it to be able to see where that expression might mean something about me and that me having an attachment to that and an inability to neutralize that or to transmute that might hinder them from being able to go further in that expression, right? Totally. I'd say to love an Aquarian, really want to know. Yeah. One of the reasons I really want Aquarians, to know what they know. <laughs> yeah. One of the reasons I collect Aquarians is because I am endlessly fascinated yeah. by their unique perspective because they got that good, good shit when it comes to being able to analyze me, you, and everything we know. And, and there's nothing to me more I like more <laughs> than for one, finding people that are curious <laughs> and are endlessly tracking <laughs> and really wanting to know and validating 
wow, that's so fat. And, oh, I didn't think about it. And making a lot of space for them and also collaborating, you know, to the extent that's authentic for you. But I think because Aquarians haven't necessarily felt safe or don't feel like they articulate it in a way that other people here understand, there's so much wounding kind of around, you know, their voices not being valued or, um, you know, doing it. I think they watch people around them be able to communicate in ways that do fit the social norms and structures more that are more celebrated in society. And so I think really making that kind of marginal, taboo, special, unique space to really want to know what they know, to really want to hear what they see. Yeah. And what they're about to discover, like to be able to like be in real time with them as they're discovering it because maybe nobody's held that space for them to find out what's on the other side of that is one of the most exquisite gifts. Mm-hmm. Like, like my intellectual orgasms. Yeah, or body orgasms. Like my Virgo is like, I deeply want to be a mastery and to actually be able to follow and learn and be curious with Aquarians in different places of their life and their minds and their bodies and their hearts has yeah been similar to being in relationship with these precious ones like scorpions and sharks and these ones that have iguanas that have like such a different way of communicating that it, nobody else has the patience or the understanding or the attunement to be able to do it and it's like I receive so much in that not mm-hmm. only learning but also just such a gift of being able to like yeah just receive that that sensitivity and that newness that actually like we we wouldn't be able to if we were in this uh, this different pattern of vibration or this different pattern of speaking or relating or listening you know and I think this is maybe part of loving anyone but (laughs) I think it's especially touching for the Aquarians is to support whatever their world dreams are Like I think Aquarians have a a relationship with the world, quote unquote, the archetype of the world. We all do, right? Whenever you hear someone talking about the world, it's a relationship process that we have. The world doesn't understand me. It's so hard to succeed in the world, right? There's a relationship. In the world. (laughs) The world. (laughs) I love your little. (laughs) You're so endlessly fascinated with stereo. You're like, like, the world. (laughs) There's a relationship process there right we all have karma to work out with whatever it is that is inhabiting the address of what we call the world so I think (laughs) think that's like heavily populated in Aquarian process you know especially with it being Uranus with it being traumatic with it being alien all that kind of stuff so I think some Aquarians they're gonna have a lot of dreams that are to be like full-out radical revolutionary innovators technological whatever's Um, I think some Aquarians want to be actually really conventionally successful, I found. Right. Some Aquarians, they really want to like, they really do more than, they can compete with any Capricorn you see to want to climb that corporate ladder, to want to have the title, to want to be, you know, have like clear metrics and data that they can point to, that they have made it, that, you know, they're important, that they're respected, all that kind of stuff. And then I think other Aquarians, you know, are still finding their way. And so even any little thing that they might want to try or explore or experiment, it's like a tiny little flame that you can like blow on and support to maybe become a fire of continuing on their journey of self and other and society. Absolutely. Because we didn't say anything about it, but I think a big part of Aquarius is that it's in in western astrology um more modern astrology it rules it's ruled by uranus and so it's like we have that capricorn aspect of it that is more wanting to see those those metrics and that achievement and have a grounded saturn Saturn reality of um, success and actualization in order to reveal itself to itself (laughs) um and then we have that Uranus um, part where it's the it's the liberator, it's the rebel, it is breaking the Saturn structures down, it is finding a new way to do it, and there's all this trauma and deconditioning around that in order to be able to even do it. And I think that comes back to the, the support them in the relationship to the world <laughs> obsession, the world. obsession. Because for one, I can like 
get really excited about it or I could get really triggered by it. I was like, shut the fuck up about this, the world or like this, the this, <laughs> this, yeah, the self or this, like it, it seems very sometimes disassociated or abstract thing. And, um, we have to deal with our own triggers around our own, um, capability of changing the world or um this intangible thing about these like people that you might be able to connect with that saves the world (laughs) or revolutionizes something that might be intangible to like what they're actually experiencing life and especially with their actual limitations and sensitivities around social dynamics so they can be so into networking and being collectively connected and then also so isolated and so stunted around being able to find those connections in like real life fucking experiences that you're in (laughs) because of all of this um conditioning and trauma around connection right and relationship. And so I think that they need to have a lot of space to work that out and we need to be able to work our own shit out around them and like be able to give them a lot of like compassion for that really uncomfortable part of the bridge that they are on inside of the collective connected and isolated individual rebel experience, right? And um and like, if you want to be a fucking road dog for the Aquarian, like sometimes they need a, a road dog, like a wingman to like help them be more Leo inside of social dynamics. Like if I'm around some of my Aquarian loves, like I know that like they're fucking geniuses and I'm super charismatic and can like be a Leo forever um, around social places and entertain and so it's like I throw the Leo fireball at them and I do it in ways that like first opens up the space and so I learn how to jump between Shiva and Shakti specifically the love Aquarians for <laughs> good and I feel like that's such a way because they're so good at being um they're they're so good at like helping others to bloom so they fucking deserve mm-hmm. they deserve it you know mm-hmm my last tip for how to love an Aquarius is don't make them meet your family. How to love me too. <laughs> <laughs> you Aquarius and Aries. And Aries. Don't make us go to Thanksgiving. Don't, make a, don't go to Thanksgiving. You don't have to. You know? And be like, I think But meet their family. It's so weird, right? Sure. <laughs> sure. Well, I don't know. <laughs> well, anyways, my Depends on the Aquarius. Like, <laughs> it depends on how in their Capricorn or their Uranus are they in, right? You have to gauge. I think that's a good way. Also, gauge if they're in their Capricorn or their Uranus. And based on that, they might want you to meet their family or not. I mean, they can also tell you. <laughs> <laughs> it also depends on who their family is. Anyways, go on about the family. <laughs> tell more. Just mean don't make them meet your family. You know, I think like if you really listen to that Aquarian, if that Aquarian's really allowed, like we're saying, to bring its revolutionary insight, they're showing us entirely new ways. You know, I know there was that whole thing a while about like the star seeds and like the crystal children and stuff like that. And I mean, you know, I that's one thing. But I do think like in Aquarians is the potential for these new templates. And um, in the archetype of Aquarius and the power of Uranus is the potential for these new templates. And like I was saying, weirdly, I think those templates come with a certain amount of what can be perceived to our system as trauma or of liberation. And it's one or the other. And so, you know, there are lots of things that I think uh, the Aquarian is holding this new template of doing things. And it can either be liberating to you or it can be traumatic yeah. And it can be liberating or traumatic to them also. Right. <laughs> There's a lot of potential trauma involved. But I, just mean like, <laughs> but I just mean being open to that, you know, like not just trying to impose right away what this is going to be and what it's look like um, allows for something maybe completely different. Right. To emerge. Right. The freedom of like those expectations and those conditions, like really truly being lifted, I feel like is so much of the death of so many relationships, right? And yeah. I, and I think to me, this is like, okay, gonna be kind of a funny thing to say. I'm gonna clarify, I'm gonna give a disclaimer, but I'm just gonna like say it that say it. Love an Aquarian like you're in a polyamorous relationship, but be monogamous. <laughs> 
<laughs> Let me clarify. <laughs> clarify, please. Okay. I will hold. Is I that not hold, funny to everyone? I will hold an amazing space for you <laughs> okay. to reveal your new template of relating. I want to know what you know. Okay, this might not go in practice, y'all. For every Aquarian, obviously. Maybe some are truly polyamorous. Maybe some are truly monogamous. But I guess that Wait, my we version... have to make all these disclaimers with Aquarians because Aquarius is going to be like, not me. So we have to say. Right. Very case specific. Very case specific. And what I mean by that is that, well, in my experience, actually, most of them want to be loved like that, but they actually are pretty monogamous. But they have like ideals of polyamory, I think. Um, however, what I am specifically th- thinking my version of polyamory in this context would be to love them like they are free a, to be their own individual, that they can have many power outlets, many different dreams that might or might not include you. And that they're a complete own person that doesn't seem like who they love or what they like or what they're connected to, what interests them in the moment, what they're doing in a social container that you are at, um, that it does not directly affect or reflect on you, right? Mm -hmm. That there is some part of you that is consistently letting that go, I feel like, Mm -hmm. inside of a relationship with an Aquarius. And... um, and I think the monogamy part is they are fucking loyal and do want a lot of stability. And like, sometimes they just genuinely are polyamorous. Um, so I, I would say, obviously, if they are polyamorous, I can do that. But, um, and but that loyalty, that stability, that fucking ride or die, that devotion to also like, like loving them and cultivating that openness is like, that's to me is like, that's my devotion inside of monogamy. (laughs) Like it feels pretty fucking devoted to go to that length to love somebody. Right. And you can still do that in polyamory, of course. But, um, but yeah, like having that true, um, like love them with open hands, I guess is what I really feel. Open, soft hands, soft hands that are really energetically listening Mm. and like really like not attaching and this is my last thought as we wrap up here is I do feel like I have I am learning that kind of love like I think that kind of love feels to me like such true love yeah, absolutely. You know, meeting someone not like, we're going to be married. Meeting someone not like, Are, can you be the daddy of my babies? Totally. Meeting someone not like, I need to date someone. I need to be married by the time I'm 30. Not being like, we need to be in a poly relationship and here are all my rules and needs. And yeah, like, and I want you to have these too. <laughs> and this is my love language. And I need you to talk to me. And that, like all those things that we would impose on a person, I feel like is part of the conditioning and programming that I am shedding in order to be able to truly, honestly, open, soft-handedly love. And so maybe even in that, we're saying thank you already to Aquarius for having taught us what you know, for giving us a new template of love and loving. Right. For like helping us to love others in that way. And then also for myself, like I have felt (laughs) the weight of that recently and as an Aries want to be loved like that too, so that I can actualize. And so that freedom and that deep, sensitive listening is just refreshing. So refreshing. Yeah. So thank you, Aquarians, to the endless lessons, to the deep, fine-tuned awareness and mastery that you seek and are and demand (laughs) and initiate others into. We love you so much, and we'll see you next week. Bye.